absolutely could not follow the men's match. It was just impossible. And they did, you know, your usual cage match. And, you know, you're not allowed to escape, but, you know, people are trying to escape. It was kind of weird. And so they had... Weird because they never said, like in WWE cage matches, to escape, climb over a pin. They never once until at one point, like way into the match, when... Um, Keanu Giannis, tried to climb out, and they said, you can't win that way. <laughs> it's like You can't win that way. Okay. It's like, oh, we changed the rules without telling anyone. So she pulls a chair into the ring. Roxanne got a hold of it. Roxanne goes over to close the door. But I swear to God, I watch this show every last single week. And this random blonde shows up and slams the door. It, the it, announcers... It, it, so they, 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 they hooked her up with uh, Kiana in, in, in some promo. Yeah, some but promo you know package. what, dude? It was like, the announcer said it was Izzy Dame. I was like, yeah. okay, that's fine. She did the big reveal, and not, there was not any reaction whatsoever from the crowd. Nobody had any idea who she was, what she was doing, and that was the finish. Kiana got the pin, and uh, then they celebrated together. So, you know, hey, listen, Roxanne's great. Kiana did a good job. They worked hard, but and this just uh, didn't work out. This did not work out well. And yeah. then the main event was Ely and Baron Corbin for the NXT title. And uh, I thought this was a very, very good main event. You know, this wasn't like a Ilya Dragunov Gunter match or anything like that. But I thought Baron did a great job. The key to this match really is, you know, Baron beat the hell out of him, and Ilya's selling is just—he's just fantastic at selling. And then he made his big comeback at the end, and he's just chopping the hell out of this guy. And I mean, Baron did a hell of a job selling for his comeback. And then they hit all the big moves and the counters and back and forth. And finally, uh, I think the thing that's great about Ilya is his gimmick is that he's a fighter who never gives up. And so they went for a power bomb, and the timing was lost. And the timing was off, and they, they lost it. They both fell down. But Ilya, like, he refuses to let go, and he fought his way into standing up and hitting this power bomb, and the crowd popped big for it. So even though they botched a spot, like, he was so good at just refusing to quit on this power bomb that when he actually hit it, he got a big reaction. So he hit the Coast to Coast drop kick. Corbin tried the end of days. Ely countered three straight H-bombs. Then he gave Corbin a hug, hit the torpedo, pinned him. And uh, Trick Williams came out afterwards, gestured that he wants the belt, because, of course, that's the uh, New Year's Evil main event. And uh, a very, very good main event. Excellent main event to end the show. Hayes was Hayes was out there too at the end, you know. Basically, um, you know, you know. I think the thing that's going to come. I think I think everyone knows now that it's going to be Hayes that that attack trick. Somehow we're going to find that out real soon. Yes. Uh, you know, and especially since Trick totally forgave Hayes, which is one of the, the big stories. When when he totally forgave them, and Lexus King said it wasn't me. It's kind of like, and then Trick is always acting like really weird, including at the very end. He's like behind him, and it's like, I think everybody expected him to attack him, but they just go off the air without him attacking him, so they're saving it. So, because um, I actually thought that, I actually thought the finish of the, um, of the men's match was going to be that Trick was going to have the match won, and then Carmelo was going to screw him, and somebody else would win. But, well, I think the most obvious thing is he's got to screw him in that title match. That's what I think, too. Yeah, yeah. I think that, Car- that Carmelo screws him in the title match, and uh, that's what happens. And, and it makes more sense that way because the whole thing started when um, Carmelo lost the title with that, that belt shot thing, which wasn't Trick's fault, but he can use it as Trick's fault that he lost the title in the first place. Yep, and the timing works great as well because they always have that big uh, WrestleMania weekend NXT show, and uh, Trick and Carmelo... That's a big match for that show. After all they've done for the last several years, yeah, yeah. actually together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they could keep it, um, that may not be. If you're doing the angle on January second, and this is April, I think you may have to do a match or two, and they may have to blow them off in, in a gimmick or something. Um, it, I, I can't imagine them going. Uh, three, you know, well, be it's Jan, all through January, all through February, all through month. Yeah, three months is a long time um, if you're going to do the angle in January. Without without doing the match, I mean it can be done, but I would, you know, if, if that feels like if you're gonna do the angle in January, that you'd want to do the match in February rather than in April. So it may be a series of matches leading to a blow off or something. 
All righty, uh, Charlotte Flair injured on SmackDown. She, uh, there's actually been. Uh, do you know exactly what the spot was? I don't know anything other than I know that she was hurt and that that she had that she was going to have X-rays. Um, and I don't, you know, I know that as of this afternoon, you know, she hadn't gotten the report in, so we don't know exactly what was, you know, whether you know what happened, you know, as far as. But I did not see. I didn't see SmackDown because I was. Uh, you know. Okay, well, I, I saw SmackDown, so here's here's what happened, and here's where I think she got hurt, because if you go on the internet, there's, uh, you know, everyone's trying to figure out what the spot was, and... I, I heard during commercial break. No, I think what happened, because when they came back from the commercial break, she was moving, you know, she was walking around, and uh, what she did is, in the corner, she has that spot where she grabs him, and she drops him into the backbreaker over the knee, and then she leans back, and they go face first in the top turnbuckle. She has in all of her matches, and she did that move, and it was different because she dropped, uh, she dropped Oscar over her knee, but then she twisted to send her into the buckle, and I think she twisted her knee because she went right down after that spot, and from that point forward, I mean. She was on one leg, hopping around, and she couldn't do anything. And, you know, prior to that spot, she was walking around and doing stuff. So I don't think she got hurt during the break. I think it was on that spot. I think she twisted her knee. And then, you know, the ref drops down, and it was obvious that she couldn't do anything. But I guess they only had, like, a couple of spots left. So she actually finished the match. They had Bailey at uh, ringside, and she tried on one leg to put on a figure four, and could barely get it on. And then she tried to uh, push up into the figure eight, which for those of you that have done gymnastics, you've ever tried to do a bridge, it's significantly more difficult to push up into a bridge with one leg. And so she's sort of getting up, and Bailey yanks her arms out, and the referee is uh, distracted, and uh, Asuka and Bailey almost bunk into each other, and then Charlotte rolls her up, pins her, and then she's immediately like, they're getting people in there to look at her knee, so... I don't know what happened, but it was it was uh, it was bad. So hopefully she's all right, but it did not look like she was all right from that spot. Yeah, I heard um, that that she was, uh, you know, she was hurting pretty bad from what I heard. Yeah. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.